about, man? I don't know, Mr. Simmons. I, I think you better talk to him from out here. I said to open up. Go on, wait out there. Boy, you know who I am? I know who you are. You're Gabe Simmons. Mr. Simmons will do. Now, you know that I'm the man that put up the $5,000 reward that put you in here? Oh, I know that, Mr. Simmons. I've just been praying to the good Lord every night that I get a chance to pay you back. <laughs> well, now, I admire a man with spirit. No hard feelings, Jimmy. But when a man comes into my territory, into my town... I know it's your town, Mr. Simmons. I didn't know you bought the whole country. When a man comes into my territory robbing my banks, well, that's bad for business, Jimmy. And what's bad for business is bad business for me. Now, do you understand? You wake me up in the middle of the night to tell me that I'm bad for your business, Mr. Simmons? You've been an enemy, boy, an enemy of the people. Now, how would you like to wipe the slate clean? Do something for the people. I'm doing something for the people. I'm giving them the pleasure of seeing me hang. Well, do this thing, and maybe the people in their gratitude won't want that pleasure. <laughs> now, how would you like to have a retrial, Jimmy? How would you like to have a jury, my jury, bring in a verdict of innocent this time? <laughs> now, boy, I'm offering you your life back. Jimmy, how many men you killed? Oh, I don't know. Six, seven, maybe. Ten, eleven, maybe? Mm, that I could remember. Mm. Well, then you wouldn't mind killing one more, would you? Oh, I'd be obliged, but uh, under the circumstances, I think that takes some doing. Well, we'd release you to do the job. You see, you'd have a perfect alibi, Jimmy. He was sitting here in the jailhouse, waiting to get hanged while the murder was committed. Walt. Better watch where you're going. Oh, easy, Matt. Come on. Now you get right home for supper, or your daughter's gonna be awful put off with you. Come on. Settle for the whiskey. Town's been full up since early this morning. Big day tomorrow. Will Oakley's coming home. How far is Hazelton? Oh, about good three hours. If you've got a bedroll, why don't you pick a nice soft spot outside of town and sack down? Start fresh in the morning. Not a bad idea. How much? Half a dollar. The sign says ten cents. Supply and demand. Tomorrow's a holiday. Everything's gone up. Why don't you come back tomorrow for the big parade? Don't know that I can afford it. I had a good, good night for you, dear horse. <laughs> oh, that last night, night before, sing by my little horse. And a few drinks. <laughs> night before. Oh, Paul. Come on, Paul. I'm all right. Oh, let me help. 
Come on. I said I was... Oh! Mercy, look what you've done. Oh, lie there all night for all I care. Find yourself a hole and bury yourself. Mira. Huh? Oh, Paul. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Looking animal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, stay out of sight until it's time. Here. Yeah? Go on now. Move out now. Go on. Yeah. Shoot, men. I'll go quietly. <laughs> Gabe, you old son of a gun. Yeah. Now, Will, you still know how to ride a horse? Still spot you 50 yards and wind up looking back at you. Well, now, I'm going to call you bluff, Will. I brought a horse out for you. Boy, bring that animal out. Ooh. Which one of his legs is busted? <laughs> <laughs> now, the mayor says, the mayor says it's undignified for a United States congressman to ride horseback. That's the way I rode out 18 years ago. That's what I told the man. Oh, uh, well, uh, them things on the side of the horse, they're called stirrups. You're supposed to put your feet in them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, old fella, you want me to help you up on that horse? Now, look at him. Well, he's in pretty good shape for an old fella. Ah, <laughs> uh, now I'm home. Not yet you ain't, Will. Have a cigar. Well, that does complete the picture, all right. Good seeing you, Gabe. Good seeing you too, Will. Thought there might be, well, a little residue of hard feelings. You mean because of that bill that you've been trying to get through? I understand you were interested in that acreage. Well, that's a thousand acres of oil-rich land. Anybody be interested, Will. 
If it's government property, Gabe, it'd be a crime to sell it to you at any price, much less for what you're offering. Well, you can't blame a man for trying, now, can you? After I introduce my bill and after it passes, you won't be able to touch that land at any price, no matter how hard you try. Now, Will, I'll fight you with everything I got. But if that bill gets passed... Well, look, now, let me put it this way. What is a million dollars or so against our friendship? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Will. Will, I promise you, whoever he is, wherever he goes, we'll find him and make him pay. Now, driver, you take the congressman back into town. Last night, a little ways back. What's your name? Heath Barkley. Let me see your rifle. <laughs> now, where are you from? Stockton. What's this all about? I'll ask the questions. You see, you spent all last night camping here, huh? That's right. Doesn't smell like it's been fired recently. Sure ain't the horse we saw, neither. Killer could have got rid of the gun, changed horses. Killer? You think we're out riding for exercise, boy? About an hour ago, somebody shot and killed Congressman Will Oakley. Riding a black and white pinto. I saw the man you're looking for a little while ago. Well, did you now? You saw the man that killed Will Oakley? Saw a fellow named Jimmy Sweetwater riding a black and white pinto. Uh, who? Jimmy Sweetwater. Hey, Gabe, he's drunk. Easy, yeah, yeah, man. but Gabe, look, I mean, Take he's crazy. Easy, I had to kill. Oh, boy. How do you know that the man that you saw was Jimmy Sweetwater? It was him. I've tangled with him before. Now, son, you made a mistake. Don't run it into the ground. Jimmy Sweetwater's in our jail, has been for the past three weeks. Well, I don't know what kind of jail you got, but I'd check it again. All right. All right, maybe you got a point. Maybe he broke jail. Which way was he heading? Back towards town. <laughs> well, now, that makes very good sense, doesn't it? Jimmy broke out of the jail, found him a horse somewhere, and then instead of running for the border, stops long enough to shoot and kill Will Oakley, and then heads back to Pinewood and to the jailhouse. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, Dollar, get you ten when we get back into town, we're going to find that he's escaped right back into that cell. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we don't have anything to hold you on, not yet. But there'll be other posses forming. Some official, some not so official. You tell that crazy story about seeing Jimmy Sweetwater to them. Well, maybe their sense of humor is not as sharp as ours. Boy, I believe it'll be in your best interests if we don't ever set eyes on you again. Come on, Sheriff, move out.
Howdy. Come to join the posse? Posse? Our marshal's rounding up a posse help out the one in Pinewood. Find the man killed Will Oakley. Nick Barkley checked in. Oh. This arrived this morning. He's going to be late. Oh, oh, oh Josh sprung a right over the minute it got here. Like I was saying, old oh, Josh sprung a right over. Always tip him a dime. Worth it, don't you think? Like your room now? As soon as I get my horse stable. Boys, I want to thank you, but I won't be needing you now. I just got a wire from Pinewood saying that they caught the fellow that shot Will Oakley dead. Who done it, Marshal? Oh, some fellow named Matt Carson. Marshal, this Matt Carson, do you know what he looks like? I never laid eyes on him. They told me he's some kind of an old drunk. It's a rotten thing when some drunken clown can... <laughs> Tired of being nice to you, Matt. Now we know you did it and we know why. But I didn't, I swear. Matt, a dozen people saw you. Saw me? Saw your horse. Now that was your horse, wasn't it? My horse? A black and white pinto. And this rifle, the murder weapon, this is yours too now, isn't it? Mine? It's got your initials carved right in the stock. Now, that is your mark, is it not? Oh, come on, man. Make it easy on yourself. Get it off your conscience. We don't need it. We got plenty of evidence. But for your own sake, confess. Now, man, I could beat it out of you. That's what everybody's expecting. But why make it hard on yourself? Come on, man. You can beat me. You can kill me, but that's not going to change anything. I didn't murder Will Oakley. How they treating you, Matt? No complaint. There won't be any either, I promise you. You know I keep my promises. And Matt, I came here to help you, protect you. See that justice is done. Matt, I want you to tell us everything. I want you to tell us everything that happened. I don't remember. I just don't remember. You mean it was all kind of uh, hazy? Yes, that, that's it. Well, we can understand that, can't we, Sheriff? I mean, you've been planning this thing for such a long time. I've been planning? To kill Will Oakley. No. Now, Matt, I heard you threaten Will myself. Well, that was just... I drank. Too much, maybe. Everyone knows how I drink. When I drink, oh. Maybe I brag a little. You see, Will Oakley did me dirt once. It was a business deal. But that was years ago. Yeah, it was years ago, Matt, but you ain't never forgotten it, have you? Especially since Will Oakley went on to become a United States congressman, and you, well, we all know what happened to you, don't we, Matt? Now, you had the motive, you had the rifle, and you had the horse. I didn't kill him, I swear. You swear you don't remember killing him. I mean, it was all hazy. That's what you swear to, and that's what we believe, don't we, Sheriff? Yes, we do, Matt. I mean, you were drinking. You were drunk. You can't recall your actions. You can't recall taking your rifle. No. Loading it. No, no. Riding up to the ridge and waiting. Waiting for Will Oakley to make himself a good target. Now, I mean, you knew. You knew that we planned to stop the stagecoach. No. You knew it 
Everybody in town knew it, and you knew it best of all. Now, now Maddie, you just... You just can't seem to remember. Sheriff, I thought we decided that we, uh, we were going to help Matt to remember. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Well, read it, Matt. Oui. Maybe to help you to remember. Yeah, I wrote it out for you. Just the way I figured it happened. The only way it could happen. Now, if there's anything you want corrected in there, the sheriff would be glad to oblige. Now, wouldn't you, Sheriff? If not, just go ahead and sign it. On the morning of October 16, I, Matthew Carson, he can full control him. I'm sorry. I'll read it for you. Being in full control of my senses, and fast, fast su faculties. Yeah, that's right, faculties. I did lay in ambush and did finally deliver the fatal shots which killed Congressman Willard Oakley. No. 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 I don't know. Hold it, Sheriff. Now, he's right, Sheriff. No, Matt. Believe me, I had no part in writing that confession. Now, you should be ashamed of yourself, Dan. You know better do a stupid thing like that. Hand me that paper. Thank you. Go on and get me a pen. And some ink. Now then, in full control of my senses and faculty. Well, that's it. There it is. That's the lie. He was drunk. He did it. He did it while he was dead drunk. Drunk out of his mind. Isn't that right, Matt? Drunk? Yes. Yes, I was drunk, but I... Crazy drunk. Don't you see, Matt? It's a defense. You didn't know what you were doing. You are not responsible for your actions. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that, that's it. Now, that's shame it. on you, Sheriff. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. Well, he staked out that territory for himself. Here, all we hope to see is that justice is done. And justice isn't hanging a man who kills while he's under the influence of alcohol. It's unfortunate. But it sure as heck ain't murder. There now. Matt, I don't think there's anything in there that you can't sign. Matt, what I did was I crossed out the words in uh, full control of my senses and faculties. And I wrote, while under the paralyzing effect of intoxicating beverages. Now you can sign that, Matt. Matt, a whole battery of Philadelphia lawyers couldn't give you a better defense than I just give you. Go on and sign it. Oh, Sheriff. Sheriff, why don't you give something, uh, something for Matt to lean on? Like, like that, that Bible over there, that Bible that you just find. I seen Jimmy Sweetwater this morning. I thought we laid that ghost to rest, boy. Well, I thought so, too. But you had to come back here and make certain, didn't you? Could it be? No, it's crazy. Still in all. Sheriff, when was the last time you checked back there? Check the cell block to see whether Jimmy was still there. Not since early morning, I'll bet. And surely not since then. We did have other more important things on our mind, didn't we? Like running down the man that killed Will Oakley. 
Well, now, that's out the way. Maybe we owe it to ourselves to see whether our Jimmy boy has flown the coop. Dan? Come on, boy. Hey, Jimmy. Is that the man you saw? Go on, try the door. Daniel here may have forgot to lock it. How about the window? Jimmy, you've been flying out of there and then flying right back in? <laughs> <laughs> now, boy, I asked you a question. Is that the man you saw? He sure looks like him. But I don't see any wings, so Jimmy sure as heck didn't fly out of here. Leaving just one possibility. Like what? Like maybe I ought to have my eyes checked. <laughs> now you send me the bill. You come out of your way to serve the cause of justice, and I appreciate that. About a week or so ago, I thought I saw an old aunt of mine been dead and buried five years now. Mine plays funny tricks. Eyes go along with it. Maybe seeing ain't believing. I said maybe I ought to have my eyes checked. But even if I was certified stone blind, I'd still swear it wasn't him. serving anything till after the funeral. Fair enough. How about some of that coffee? Hey, weren't you in here the other day? Yeah, I took your advice. Camped outside of town. Yeah, there was gonna be a big parade, all kinds of doings. This place would have been busting with business. Why, I'd have sold more whiskey in two hours. No, nah, that's not the important thing. Will Oakley was a great man. He'd have been even greater, except for a stupid old man with a grudge. They'll hang Matt Carson for what he did, but that won't make things even. It's Matt Carson. Does he have a family? Yeah, just his daughter. You can't blame her for Matt, and I feel sorry for her. She's gonna be awful lonely out there alone. Where's that? Oh, Carson Place, by the bridge. That's out on the North Road, isn't it? Mm-hmm, that's right. How much for the coffee? Oh, it's on the house today. You're not thinking of going out there, are you? What? I don't advise it. It might look like you were being friendly. Now, this town won't take to that. Thanks for the coffee. <laughs> Thank 
Dave, I just want to talk to you about your father. It's important. May I come in? My name's Heath Barkley. Look, you just, you don't want to talk to me. You just say the word and I'll go now, you hear? But, uh, soup smells good. Mind if I sit? Tell you something else about that soup. You, uh, offer me a plateful, I won't say no. But it tastes even better than it smells. I'm sorry there's nothing to go with it. My father... He was going to bring back a loaf of bread. I usually bake my own. The past few days, I, I've been so busy at the store. I work over at the general store for Mr. Crowder. Well, we've been taking inventory and... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just babbling on while my father... That's all right. I still can't believe it. Pa murderer. Anything else. Every day I expect to hear that he fell down a mine shaft or fell off his horse and broke his neck or walked into a burning building and didn't even feel the heat until it was too late. Anything helped. If you tell me he, he drowned in his own glass of whiskey, I'd believe it. But that he'd take a rifle, lie in ambush to murder Will Oakley? Oh, no. To anyone who knows my father, no. They say your father had a grudge against Will Oakley. My father had a grudge against the world. Before my mother died, he, he blamed her for all his troubles. If only he hadn't been tied down with a wife and a daughter, he could have gone out and licked the world. Somewhere years ago, he, he just took the wrong turn in life, and he's been blaming others for it ever since. But Mr. Barkley, he's not a murderer. They say the man who did it was riding your father's horse. I don't doubt that. Used your father's rifle? Probably. Ma'am, that's mighty powerful evidence. Is it? There are at least three dozen people around here that could tell you how easy it would be to steal my father's horse and his rifle. In fact, half the time he's so drunk he could steal his pants without him knowing it. Well, if it's any comfort, I think he's innocent too. Too. You're a stranger here. You've never even met my father. I've seen him a couple of times. And despite all the evidence, you know he's innocent. Well, there's more to it than that. I didn't say I knew he was innocent. You're working for him. Him? Him. Mr. Gabe Simmons. You know who I'm talking about. He sent you here. Nobody sent me here. Well, if he did, you can go back and you can tell him that whatever I know, there's nothing I can prove. I was at work when it happened. I can't prove that my father wasn't up there waiting to kill Will Oakley. I can't prove he didn't fire those shots. And if I could, I don't think I'd try. So if you're working for Gabe Simmons, you can get out of here right now. And you can tell him he's safe. I'd be glad to tell Mr. Simmons all that. Except right now, we're not exactly on speaking terms. What have you got to do with all this? I was just passing through. Well, you shouldn't have stopped. And if you're smart, you won't go back there. Even to help your father? Especially to help my father. He's been dead for years. Hanging's only going to make it official. Look, there's not much I can do. But my brother's a lawyer. I thought I'd wire him from Hazleton. Maybe he can help. I'm sorry. I know I sound callous. It's just that I've waited on him hand and foot 
I've washed him. I've fed him as though he were an infant, and it's true. When he dies, I'm free. I'd like you to go now. Nothing you can do. You, your lawyer brother, nothing anyone can do. Gabe Simmons is king here. And if the king wills my father dead, he'll hang. People like Gabe Simmons get their way. And when it's done, when he's dead, maybe I'll begin to live. Advice too good, do you, boy? We don't appreciate a stranger coming into our town and meddling in our affairs. Let's get out of here. Dirty. I'll get a doctor. No. But you're hurt. Be all right. Now you know what happens to little people. Look, you've tried. You've done as much as anyone can do. Will you go home now and forget us? But you'll die. They'll kill you like they killed Will Oakley. Or they'll hang you like they're going to hang my father. Or they'll beat you to death. But you'll die. I'm his daughter. I should know. He's not worth it. He's not worth it. your horse. You're coming back with us. I don't think so. You defying the law? This isn't your territory. Maybe you better talk to the marshal here. Maybe I'd better. Barkley! Barkley. Don't you take another step. Marshal? Marshal! Yeah! You better have a good reason for busting in here this time of night. That man is my prisoner, Marshal. Well, he ain't going nowhere. What's he done? He killed Will Oakley. Well, I thought you had the man that done it, this Matt Carson. 
Well, we were half right. Everything pointed to him and still does. It was his gun, his horse. Well, how does he figure into it? His name is Heath Barkley. Yeah, that's right. It's one of the Stockton Barclays. They got a whole lot of land that might be up for grabs if Will Oakley's bill had been passed. Well, that's a pretty good motive, Gabe, but wouldn't that be true for you, too? Yes. Except for the fact that Will Oakley was the best friend I had in this world and that he died in my arms. But don't you take my word for it. We got it straight from the horse's mouth. Right from the man that Barkley paid to do his killing for him. Matt Carson. Simmons, you really had to dig to come up with this. Matt confessed. And he named this man. Simmons, you're a liar. Matt Carson didn't kill Will Oakley. And he couldn't have named me because I never met the man. Ask him, Marshal. Ask Matt Carson. Well, that'd be kind of hard to do, seeing as how Matt hung himself in his cell five minutes after he signed that confession. Oh, what'd you do? Did you come back take another look? He won't be here long, Jimmy. No, sir. We're gonna hang him for killing Will Oakley. <laughs> They're gonna hang you for killing Will Oakley. That's the best laugh I've had in years. Well, you better enjoy it while you can, Jimmy. Because it's gonna wind up with a laugh on you. Yeah? Well, what's that supposed to mean? I saw you near that ridge the morning Will Oakley was killed. From that, it doesn't take much figuring to know who killed him. What kind of deal did they offer you, Jimmy? Will Oakley's life for your freedom? What's the matter with you? You been drinking or something? You know, they can't possibly set you free. Once I tell my story in court, how they let you out of this jail to kill Will Oakley, they're stuck. They can't let you walk out of here after that without it looking like I told the exact truth. So if I hang, you'll hang right beside me. Kind of looks like we're in this together. I'm afraid that's the truth, boy. We were going to talk to you about it in the morning, but maybe it's just as well we tell you now. There's been a slight change in plan. Is that a fact? Yeah, that's a fact, boy. That's a fact we all got to live with if we want to live. Yeah, he's right. You ain't going to give me no retrial. Stay right where you are. Oh, boy, there ain't going to be no retrial. But you still can get your freedom. Now, I'm not going to fool with you, Jimmy. Once that boy back there starts into talking, once they suspect that you killed Will Oakley, well, you won't be free for very long, not with half the U.S. Army looking for you. Well, why don't you keep him from talking like you did Matt Carson? Too many suicides, too many accidents, no. No, Jimmy, but if uh, Barkley is shot and killed while he's trying to escape... All right. It's just like you said, we're in this together. Now, they may hang us. We may break out of here. But we're going to do it together. Right, partner? I'll let you and I go. There's no time for that. Come on. Let's go. Did you get him? Nope. Well, never mind. 
take care of him. Now, you better make your break. There's a horse tied out front. Hey, it's me. It's Jimmy. Trust no law, man. Heath, don't you worry nothing now. I'm just starting enough to live. Tell that marshal what happened. Oh. Boy, you better hurry up and get him. but some other time. Well, a little bit late, aren't you? Well, I can explain that. Now, don't tell me you didn't get my telegram. Well, I got your telegram. I said I'd be here last night, didn't I? That's right, Nick. And that this gonna... morning, you and I would be on a train heading for San Francisco. Yeah, we were To attend go... a very important meeting, which was to start, all oh, about a half hour ago. You missed it, huh? Yes, we missed it. And I don't want this to come as a complete shock to you, Heath. But at least I had the foresight to telegraph ahead that we may be a little bit late. Well, that's real good thinking, Nick. But we... you didn't think of it, did you? Just like you never thought of leaving a message in the desk inside. I thought of leaving word in there, but, but you got tied up. Or should I say, maybe you got tied down. Well, now I hope she was worth it. It was a girl, wasn't it? Nope, you see, when I rode into Pinewood, well, the hotel was filled up. So then I went over... What was it, Heath? You know something, Nick? You're right. It was a girl. <laughs> you know, uh, might save some time if we split up. Probably would. As late as it's getting. Tell you what. I go down further down the line, and you uh, follow up here. That's what I figured. What's that? Well, that just gives me about twice as much fence to check as you. Well, you're young and healthy. It'll be dark before I'm through. Maybe I'll spend the night in the lion shack. Come on in the morning. Suit yourself. What can I do for you? Remove your weapon. Look, if you fellas are figuring on robbing me, well, I gotta... Silence! Now hear my words. 
On the morrow, you'll stand before a tribunal of my people to be tried on a charge of murder. A murder? There's no more to be said. Now get on your horse. Look, mister, I don't know what kind of loco talk you're making, but I... Well... He'll be punished properly at the trial. Now put him on his horse. Hurry. The day wanes and we must travel far. That's three. Now, you want to try for four? You just caught me when I was very tired from riding a fence all day. <laughs> Saddest story I've ever heard. Yeah. Isn't Heath here yet? Dinner will be spoiled if we wait much longer. No, and as late as it is, I don't know if he'll be coming in at all. Well, we'd better eat then. Although, I must say, I don't like the idea of his eating from a tin can in that lime shack. Especially if he knew we were having a beef roast. The truth of the matter is, I think Heath was looking for an excuse to spend the night out on the range. You're probably right. Heath told me that once in a while he likes to be off by himself. Do a little thinking. Says it makes him appreciate it more when he gets back. I know gratification in such an action, my child. Yes, I would. Silence! When the sun rises, then will he be judged. And punished according to the laws of our people. So be it. Now fetch him some food, child. Over the cage. He's got. All right. Uh oh, looky here. Hey. That's real nice. Give me that. How much money you got there, Brother Cyrus? It counts to better than twenty dollars. Look. Hey, ain't that a lot for him? Cyrus, well, five years of living with a man as thick as her husband was in this long period of mourning, well, it ain't good for either her or you. I know, Brother Benjamin. I know. And I aim to speak to Brother Hammett about that. Why 
try it, brethren. It'll begin. State your name. You know my name. This court has been convened, Heath Barkley, to judge you on a charge of murder. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed? I don't know what this is all about. But if you think I murdered somebody, then you should turn me over to the sheriff. No. You killed one of our people. Therefore, you should be tried by our laws. I am no judge, and they're your jurors. I tell you, there's some mistake. I didn't kill anybody. You killed this woman's husband. When? Five days ago. Mister, you're wrong. Five days ago, I was home working on my family's ranch, and I can prove that. He died five days ago from a bullet you put in him five years ago. What are you talking about? His name was Joshua, and he was a man of peace. Yet on the third day of March in the year 1872, while passing by night on the road near White Springs, you accosted him, attempted to rob him, and then shot him. If you deny this, you lie. I don't deny I was around White Springs about that time. And I shot at someone. But the man was trying to rob me. I was bedded down for the night, and he was trying to steal my horse. Oh. Silence! Then you admit you shot Joshua. I only admit that I shot at someone. I don't know who. I don't even know if I hit him or not. Your mark was true. The bullet lodged in his back. It could not be removed. It slowly spread poison in his system until that poison killed him. He was paralyzed from it. He had no feeling from the waist down. He feel nothing, nothing at all. He couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything. For five years, he was like that. I had to carry him. Every place he went, like a little baby. But can't you understand? I didn't murder him. I was only protecting myself and what was mine. It's Joshua's word against yours. But he's dead. Look, can't you see I'm not the kind of man that goes around robbing and killing people? Doesn't anybody believe me? No, no, no. What say you, brethren? Does he speak the truth? So be it. Heath Barkley, you have been found guilty as charged. I tell you, I'm not guilty. Your sentence has been prescribed. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Therefore, as you have taken away life, you must replace it with your own. You can't kill me for something I didn't do. I did not say you'd been put to death. I said you must replace it with your own life. You will replace the one that's been taken from us. What do you mean by that? In time, perhaps you will learn the goodness of our ways. We are a simple people. We ask for little and take only what providence provides. We live in righteous fear and look upon one another for sustenance. You, therefore, will provide as Joshua provided. I don't understand what you're talking about. By your hand, this woman was left without support or provision. Accordingly now, you will serve her as you directed. What do you mean, as I'm directed? You can't make me serve her or anybody else. You will do as you are told, work as you are directed, and live out your days in penance. In doing so, you have been given your only hope for salvation. What's it going to be, Brother Barkley? <laughs> you going to behave yourself so as we can get along? Tell him what to do. I need wood for my fire. It gets cold at night, and I like a nice big fire. Come on.
Now, this is hard to figure. Why? Why, Heath didn't get to this part of the fence. I left him just a little beyond here. Maybe he went after some new wire. Uh, if he wanted wire, to come home for it. He wouldn't have stayed at the line shack. Might be trying to get in some extra bunk time. Uh-huh. Well, now, we'll just see to that. And on the other hand, maybe he isn't. Enough? I said I liked a big fire. That's right, you did. Well, I can't say as I blame you. Warm fire can be kind of comforting to someone who's alone. Hey, oops. I'm sorry. What for? That you lost your man. That you're alone. No woman should be like that. Listen, don't you try to soft talk me. I just said I'm sorry. And I am. water like it was real easy to get. Well, it ain't. It's got to be carried up from the lake. So from now on, that'll be your job. Now, you get back into your cage. Evening, Bettina. You got enough wood? A little while. I brought us food. Well, I'd say that's right fine if I was a little hog. Yeah, lie down there and slop it up. Don't. If you kill him, you'll be doing him a favor. All right. I don't want to do him no favors. Bettina, sit down. I want to talk. About. about you and me, about what I've been saying to Brother Hemet. It, it ain't right. Us two being the only ones hereabouts that ain't. Bettina, you know I got a feeling for you, don't you? You forget I'm in mourning for a year. Well, Brother Hemet could fix that if you was of a mind. I don't think so. Time, woman. Just give it a little more time. I sent Collins out to scrape up some more men. He's going to meet us down to West Gate. We'll find him. Don't you worry, we'll find him. It's been two nights, Jared. We know.
up. For the man and women folk, maybe. But you gotta remember, we got a lot of mighty thirsty horses back to camp. So you just keep right on holding. You and me and Brother Hammett's going to ride down the valley tonight. What about him? If we ain't back by morning, Brother David will keep him busy. I reckon her seeing him work like that kind of satisfies the hate she's got for him. Just so it don't satisfy it too much. Where are they going? Hunting. At night? There's fresh meat in the valley. I mean, there are cattle herds in this valley. Straight all over at this time of year. If a dumb animal has got it to us, we accept it as a gift of Providence. Here's your food. Providence, huh? Well, that kind of thinking might explain a lot of things. What do you mean? Nothing. But if I wait long enough, maybe Providence will provide me with something a little more digestible. Come along, Brother David. Wasting your time. There's nothing under that dirt but rock. Besides, you couldn't get far anyway. Cyrus's dogs won't allow it. They'd catch you and tear you apart if you tried to escape. Is that for me? Providence moves in mysterious ways. You'd be no good to me or anyone else if you didn't eat. That's the kind of stuff Hemet lets you read? Nobody knows I have it. I, I found it. You been to places like that? San Francisco. Barbary Coast, sure, lots of times. Is it a place of sin? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Those women. You 
find them attractive? Well, I suppose so. Of course, there's a lot of different ways a woman is attractive to a man. Am I attractive? I'd say so. Two men like Cyrus and some of those others. I don't care about them. I'm asking you. Well, I might be able to give you a better answer if you'd clean yourself up and started looking the way a woman should. Fred. Evening, Victoria. Uh, still no luck. Oh. Now, Nick and Jared asked me to come by and tell you they're going to bed down the lion shack tonight. And we'll all start looking again at sunup. Mm. Well, thank you very much. I guess I'll go to bed now. Good night. there. Leave whoever you are before you're shamed. You hear me? Kill me if they can't find me. I'll tell them. No, you won't. Not if you're any kind of a woman, you won't. How do you know what kind of woman I am? So you can find out. If you see, I, I can speak to Hemi. No. Please. I'll, I'll do anything you want. I'm sorry. Buckley. He attacked David and he ran off over there. You take this road. I'll circle about.
Barkley. You move one step closer to that horse, and I'll be forced to blow your brains out. Justice with mercy, Cyrus. Let him down. Now understand me. We are not of a savage nature, but rather a gentle people. For we believe that forgiveness is better than revenge or punishment. I hope by now that you have learned the hopelessness of trying to escape. For the next time, your punishment will not be so simple. Seeing as how you people are so gentle, so understanding. My family, their minds are to be set at ease. At least let them know they don't have to worry about me anymore. I mean, you'd expect the same consideration, wouldn't you? It would weigh heavy on my conscience if others suffered because of your sins. What have you that they may know, would recognize? I had a coin. On a chain. He took it. Give it to me. I will consider the matter. I'll see him to his tasks. And be wary. All right, move. You ain't even finished hauling water. Move! only right that his family be set to ease. It's like he's just vanished. We're running out of places to look. You sound like you're giving up. Nobody's giving up, Mother. It's just that the men, well, they're getting tired. They have to want to get back Well, to then work. get other riders. We already have. There'll be a dozen men here ready to ride at sunup. Lucky coin. The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. You would do well to put Heath Barkley from your memory. He is as a dead man. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. It says as a dead man. Not is a dead man. Hey, seeing as how we're so close to Stockton, what do you say we go on in and have a little refreshment? I say that's a good idea. A real good idea. Sleep. I brought you some coffee. Please, I, I want to speak to you. Some other time. I say again what I said by the lake. I could make life better for you. I could speak to him it. What about? But you're, you're taking me for your wife? He 
did so much to your dislike. I bathed for you, you saw me. And my hair, I washed it and combed it. Do you like it? Yes, I do. Then you like me as a woman. There's a lot more goes into being a woman than just taking a bath and combing her hair. I feel like a woman. When men look at me, I feel like a woman. What man? Cyrus, some of those others? They're not men, they're animals. My husband was just like them. I married him because I was told to. I didn't love him, I couldn't. For a long time, I thought I could never love anyone. Any man. Because I thought they were all like that. But now I'm not sure. You looked at me by the lake and you said, I'm sorry. Please, I don't want your pity. Wake up, child. Wake up, I say. You've got to understand, Brother Hammond, it wasn't his fault. He partook of liquor, did he not? Well, that's what I mean. It was the liquor. You know how it makes him. He couldn't help himself. That'll be all, Brother Benjamin. Ah, my child. What is it? Did you not sleep well? I, I was restless. Ah, that's understandable. Very understandable. Considering the trying times you've endured, a woman all alone, without... My child, I've decided it'd be wrong for you to suffer any longer. A woman is only made whole by the bonds of marriage. And that's how it should be. You wish me to remarry so soon? I wish only for your happiness. Therefore, I decree that your period of mourning be ended. And on the morrow's sun, I will bind you in wedlock to Brother Cyrus. Cyrus? Who else among us is without a woman? Or sheep without a man? It is ordained. Come now. Be happy for your salvation from loneliness. As you wish. That's better. Now, about the money your departed husband left you. I believe it was a hundred dollars, was it not? Yes. I'll need fifty dollars of it. As a dowry for Brother yeah. Cyrus. Now. Now? I don't understand. He's been put in jail in Stockton. The money is necessary for his release. And what better use could the money be put to than in behalf of one's betrothed? I'll get it. May I go with you? I need cloth for a proper wedding dress. I'll have the wagon hitched. Be ready in five minutes now. About it, this gives us reason to hope. I'll round up the men and meet you out at the ranch in about an hour, all right? We'll be ready. Come on. Now you go purchase your cloth while I get Cyrus. Called perfume. 
Here, have a sniff. <laughs> How much is it? Uh, the small bottle's a dollar. A dollar. <laughs> Stuff sure just smell good. Mm. You sure do have a lot of nice things in this, this store. Why don't you take a look around? You don't have to buy anything you don't want. Thank you. Peace, brother. That purplish cloth sure is pretty. I'm afraid it's very costly. It isn't cloth, it's pure silk. I need something like that for my wedding dress. See, I want it to look like this. Dina, we're ready to go. I I'm sorry, I'm still looking. She was just showing me a picture of the dress she wants to make. A dress like that is not for you. It's the cloth of a scarlet woman. This is more fitting. What is the price? Three dollars. Pay for it and keep us waiting no longer. I'll get your size. Audra had that dress made for this photograph last year. There's no doubt about it. It had to be torn from the family photograph. Well, Heath carried one around like that in his wallet, only smaller, same as me. But I'd like to know is where the girl get it. Fred, have you got any idea where they might be camping now? Well, this being the dry season of the year, I'd expect they'd be back in the hills near the lake. At least that's where they camped two years ago. Well, you take your boys and uh, try Blue Lake, and we'll take ours and get you. All right. Brother Cyrus. You miss me today, Brother Berkeley? Well, don't you worry. Because after Bettina and me gets married in the morning, we live the rest of the day. Just you and me. And the next, and the next after. For just as long as you say. Bettina, you hear me? I'm in bed, Cyrus. What do you want? Well, I come to say good night. Thank you, good night. That's all? I'm very tired, Cyrus. I I'm going to sleep now. Well, all right. Good night. I'll see you in the morning.
but for feeling is too much. Well, considering the rest of this place, no. It's kind of nice. Cyrus should be pleased. I didn't buy it for Cyrus. I bought it, well, to prove to you that I can be a woman. Bettina, you are a woman. It's just that... What? That I'm not enough of a woman? You could teach me. I can learn. Uh, it takes a man to teach a woman, doesn't it? The others, Cyrus, and even the man that was my husband. You were right when you said they're animals. But you're marrying Cyrus tomorrow. I can't marry him if I'm not here, can I? You'd run. To where? Anywhere you take me. I know where they keep the key to the padlock. We'd need horses. I can get them. What about the dogs? I'll take care of them. Understand one thing, in case you want to change your mind. Now, there are laws, civilized laws, that'll keep them from taking you back. And now see to it. And I'll help you get a new start. But as for me, I'm not part of the bargain. You're a man, Eve Barkley. The only man I've ever known. And I'm learning already. I think be disappointed if you were part of the bargain. Well, there's nothing around here. Let's try Pine Lake. It's two miles on up. He's dead. Him. It's his fault. She's dead. All right, hold it right there. Throw him down, boys. You all right? I'm all right. This girl was to be wed on the morrow. Why? Why, in the name of justice, couldn't the bullet have found you instead of her?
was trying to help you escape, wasn't she? Why? Why? For five years, her heart cried out for vengeance. You're wrong. It wasn't vengeance. You corrupted her. The days you spent with her, you stole into her mind like the serpent of Eden. You made her see evil as good. No. I just gave her a chance to see herself as she could be. As a woman. You turned her against her own people. Against the memory of her own husband. And against living here in darkness. The darkness is outside in your world, where sin and temptation blot out God's light. We kept Bettina away from Satan's reach. And away from life. There's a lot that's bad in the world. But hiding from it isn't the answer. You've got to fight it. And in the meantime, enjoy all the good. You see, Bettina wasn't trying to free me nearly as much as she was trying to free herself and begin to live. You understand, I have to report what happened here to the sheriff. I understand. <laughs> 